is a special presentation of EA Sports from the Coliseum in Oakland. Our tribute to the coach, the John Madden Legacy Game. I'm Brandon Gaughton here to take you through the proceedings. And coming up, we're going to tell the story of a man who was truly larger than life and whose impact on the sport of football certainly is going to live on for decades and decades to come. The Coliseum back to its original 70s glory. What a scene in the East Bay. And we're underway in the John Madden Legacy game. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. So it's the NFC Stars who will get the ball first. And Charles, as we alluded to, we've got a different era of coach on each sideline. So the man coaching this NFC squad, we'll call him Young John Madden, this is a coach who was trying to establish a foothold in the NFL and on the cusp of doing it very successfully. Yeah, you think back to that period, those early days as the coach of the Raiders, the late 60s in the AFL and then in the NFL in the early 70s. Coach was a guy who was ahead of his time. The Raiders were one of the first teams to have mini camps, one of the first to film practice because he wanted to practice coaching as much as he could. And his teams, they were successful right from the start of his head coaching tenure. It's a second down run with Sanders. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. So as we mentioned at the top, well, let's take you through the life of John Madden. And you know, it's very fitting that we're here back in the Bay Area, not just because John's so associated with Raider football, but also because this was where he spent his formative years. Yeah, he grew up over Daly City with his buddy John Robinson, who will also become an NFL head coach. He played his high school ball at Jefferson High, eventually wound up playing tackle at the University of Oregon, and later Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Played well enough that in 1958, he was a 21st-round draft pick of the Philadelphia Eagles. That's right, the draft of 30 rounds then. But Charles, you mentioned Coach was a 21st-round draft pick back in 1958. It was the Philadelphia Eagles who selected him. But unfortunately for John, knee problems, they just continued to dog him. He was hurt in his first training camp. Actually never saw the field as a player in the NFL. But it was still during his time with the Eagles. You and I were talking about this before going on air. That you could start to see the light bulb going on for what his career path might entail. And it went on in a big way, didn't it? Because while he was rehabbing his knee, he started to spend a lot of time breaking down film with the Eagles with quarterback Norm Van Brocklin, the future Hall of Famer and future head coach in the NFL. Remember, Van Brocklin coached with the Falcons, he coached with the Vikings. And was there during that time, I think Coach Madden really liked. Touchdown! Randy Moss, an 11-yard touchdown. And the NFC takes it all the way down the field to score on their opening drive. Extra point by Anderson, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it's finished off by an NFC touchdown. Dante Hall going to bring it out of the end zone. And he's going to be out of bounds here as the run back will leave him shy of the 20-yard line. So, Charles, as mentioned, we've got another Coach Madden over here on the AFC sideline. Of course, his Raiders, members of the AFC West. So this is a conference he battled in for his entire career. And you think about the landscape of the NFL as he was getting into the back half of his tenure. It was a golden era for coaches. You had Don Shula, Tom Landry, Chuck Noll, Bud Grant. But it was John Madden who had the best winning percentage of them all, CD. 759, the best ever. Brandon, it's hard to believe he could be so successful in a conference with all those great teams. The Steelers won four Super Bowls. The Dolphins won two and were a mainstay in the playoffs. The Colts were tough. The Broncos came out late and went to a Super Bowl themselves. But against Hall of Fame coaches, John Madden's record, 36-16-2. That's pretty incredible. His Raiders were a factor each and every year. And they get 10 yards there and convert on third. 
Well, Charles, you know, it was in the early 1960s that a young John Madden made the acquaintance of the owner of the Oakland Raiders, one Al Davis, of course, and the two, they really bonded, would become one of the best owner-coach duos in NFL history. And to take it a step further, Al Davis became someone who John referred to as his best friend. Yeah, 1967, Brandon. Al Davis hired Coach Madden to be a linebacker's coach. Remember, this was still the AFL at that point. We had not merged totally with the NFL. And coach the AFC with the football here to begin the second quarter. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Play action. Now it's Brady sliding out of the pocket. Tyreek Hill's got another one. And they move this all the way down to the nine. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Charles, you talked about John Madden and the Raiders going on a run. Try these numbers on for size. So 10 seasons as a head coach, the Raiders won their division seven times. They finished second the other three times, and he became the youngest coach to amass 100 career regular season victories and is still, to this day, the franchise leader in wins. And when you think about it, that's where that rivalry with Kansas City really took root. As did the expression, commitment to excellence. And boy, was it personified by the players who played for Coach Madden. On offense, how about quarterback Kenny Stabler, wide receiver Cliff Branch, wide receiver Phil Blake McCall, tight end Dave Casper, to name a few. How about this great lineman he had? Center Jim Otto, guard Gene Upshaw, tackle Art Shell, all of them in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And guys on the defensive side of the ball. And that is caught for an AFC touchdown. Tony Gonzalez. A two-yard touchdown grab. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with an AFC touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. From the six. And he'll be out of bounds here just past the 20-yard line. With the NFC offense coming out here, and you know Charles, Coach Madden always said that if he had one drive to win a game and he had to pick a quarterback, he would pick Kenny Stabler. But I think if you asked him to omit any of his Raiders players, there's a good chance the guy he'd select would be Brett Favre. Brett Favre is always smiling. He's always laughing. He's always talking to someone. He remembers that it's a game. And if it's a game, you should have fun. And Brandon, that always reminds me of a great movie line where one of the players was telling the coach, every time I say it's a game, you say it's a business. And every time I say it's a business, you say it's a game. With coach, it was always a game. Charles, you think about all the success that John Madden had as an NFL head coach, and he had plenty, and we talked about it, including the 10 straight winning seasons, a Super Bowl title. But like any great coach, he also suffered through a few tough losses along the way as well. And Brandon, those tough losses came in high-stakes games because they always had such great success. Think about it this way. Six times in his 10 years, the Raiders were knocked out near the AFL championship game or the AFC championship game. But might be a divisional round exit. That's the one that bothered him most of all. Three Rivers Stadium, December 1972. Yes, the Immaculate Reception game. Franco Harris grabbing the ball that was deflected. Almost at his shoe tops, he picked it up and took it in for a game-winning score to get the steal to him. Victory and partner, anyone who loves black and silver still doesn't believe that ball hit anyone in black and silver that day, and that play should never have counted. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. 
the CD we spoke of some of the Raiders tough playoff losses through the decade of the 70s but for one shining season they put it all together and that was 1976 you remember a 13 and one regular season a memorable playoff win over New England they dominated the Steelers 24 to 7 in the AFC title game and then a meeting with the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl 11. Oh Brandon what a game that was down at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena a gorgeous 53 degree day perfect for football Raiders got out to a 16 to nothing lead at the half and Clarence Davis no relation although I would certainly claim it strong on the ground 137 yards rushing how about Freddie Blitnikoff the MVP of that game catching everything that came his way Kenny Stabler running the offense with precision and we all remember the one to seal it the grand old man himself Willie Brown with the laser focused eyes picking off Fran Tarkenton and taking it 75 yards for a touchdown. 32 to 14, the final score. Raiders had their first Super Bowl title, and we got the iconic shot of Coach Madden being lifted on the shoulder pads of his players and carried aloft as a Super Bowl champ. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. On play action, it's Brady. He finds his man complete. That's Gonzalez. Now the AFC going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. On play action, now Brady. Out to his left. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. They asked him to take charge and get them to a spot where they could at least attempt to kick before the half, and he does just that. Didn't trust what he saw downfield, so he took it upon himself to get them into field goal range using his legs. That's coming through with a play they needed in a big spot. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. Now a play fake, Brady. Oh, he's going to let this go for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And they take the lead here now. 10 to 7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. Ideally, uh, you have to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now the NFC heading back out, Hall of Famer Randy Moss, a part of this offense. And Coach Madden, boy, he always appreciated the ferociousness with which number 84 attacked the football in the air. As Randy Moss says, just chunk it up there, dog, and I'll go get it. And Coach, boy, did he ever go get it. Over 15,000 receiving yards, 156. So we are at halftime of the John Madden Legacy Game, and now we present a special tribute to the man of the hour, narrated by the Raiders' own Trey Mosley. We now proceed to the start of this.